How much is that altogether? The candy and cigarettes. That'll be a dollar fifteen. Charge it. Well, they're all ready, Miss Pinkside. They come to uh, three dollars and forty cents. That's fine. Charge it. Hey, I'm from the telephone company. I've got an order to take your phone out. But that's a pay station. I've got to have that for my customers. What customers? Hiya, Dubby. Hello, Bert. <laughs> Dubby, good pal. I'm going on the back today. Shoot the works. <laughs> What's the big occasion, Bert? Dubby, I'm the happiest guy in the world. Cupid sneaked up on me and tripped me. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting engaged today. What a girl. Oh, boy, what a panorama. <laughs> hey, this stuff is cut. Kick it up with a dash of raspberry. What's the matter, Dovey? Well, I can't afford the rental. And I certainly need that phone today of all days. Well, what happened? Well, Mrs. Dove went to the hospital this morning, and I expect to be a father any minute now. Gee, that's right. I didn't expect it to happen so soon. Why don't you get out of the hospital? Oh, I can't leave the place. And now I can't even get a telephone message. It's the international situation. That's what it is. Bert, you can help me. Yeah. Uh -huh. Listen, call up the hospital and tell them to notify you. And the minute you get the news, let me know. Oh, that's easy. Don't worry, Dovey. I'll break the news to father. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bert. But don't tell me if there's anybody around. Why not? It's your baby, isn't it? I know, but I'm trying to get a loan of $500 from the Easy Payment Plan Company. Oh, I see. You, you don't want your baby to know about it. <laughs> no, no. You see, my credit isn't very good, and if they find out I have a lot of extra expense, I won't get the loan. Don't worry, Dubby. They'll never know it's your baby. <laughs> I'll take the rap. Thanks, Bert. And I'm going to name that child after you. Bert! Junior. And just for that, I'm going to buy the kid his first complete outfit. Baby carriage and everything. Well, that'll run into a lot of money, Bert. Oh, it doesn't matter. I saved up for a four-day honeymoon, so I'll cut it down to three days. What's the difference? That's very kind of you, Bert. I wouldn't have needed all this help if my customers paid cash instead of charging everything. It shows you're a bad businessman, Dovey. You want to make them pay cash. What do I owe you for this banana split? Fifteen cents, Barry. Okay, charge it. <laughs> now remember, Nice, I don't want you to give the message to anybody but me, Bert Halibut. Very well, Mr. Halibut. <laughs> I understand the circumstances. You understand the... Uh, say, I had nothing to do with this. I'm just a friend. Okay, goodbye. Operator, give me Dion. One, two, three, four, five. Hello? Yes? This is the infant equipment company. Listen, madam, uh, I want a trousseau for a newborn baby. I understand. I do am a father. <laughs> oh, excuse me, miss. Uh, I thought you was a woman. <laughs> Now listen, I want a baby carriage and a coverlet. Pink or blue? Well, uh, to play safe, make it a dark color. Then I want some uh, baby clothes, some underwear, and uh, <laughs> some large bibs. <laughs> okay. Now, according to your loan application, you have no debts. No, sir. You just want this money for business reasons. Yes, sir. Dummy! Well, Dubby, they're going to let me know as soon as the baby arrives. You've got nothing to worry about. What's that? Uh, this is my neighbor, Mr. Halibut. Uh, Bert, this is the investigator from the Easy Payment Plan Corporation. Oh, I get it, I get it. He won't find out anything from me. <laughs> find out what? Uh, yeah. Well, uh... uh <laughs> you see, his, uh, he didn't want you to know that he's getting a new member in the firm. Oh, well, we have no objection to business expansion. Now, uh, what is your new partner's name? Uh, well, uh, you... Uh, yeah. <laughs> the new partner's name. Yes. Uh, well, you better call it Joe, for sure. Now, Joe, 
Does that stand for Joseph or Josephine? We don't know yet. I'd like to help with this new partner. Uh, well, you see, he, he isn't in town yet, but we, as soon as he arrives, uh, the, we're expecting a phone call. Mm -hmm. And uh, who recommended this new partner to you? His, uh, his, uh, his wife met him through a Mr. Storm. No. And uh, where is your wife now? Well, she's uh, she's at a woman's camp. Oh. <clears throat> well, Mr. Dove, I'll have to check these things all over before you get the loan. Good day. Good day. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> Boy, if that guy ever find out you're go going to be a father. What's that? Now, uh, I, w I was telling Mr. Dove, uh, <laughs> I'd love to be his father. I can't for the life of me understand why Pomona wants to marry that Bert Halliburton. I love him, Father. In the old days, a father had something to say in his own home. Oh, Dad, you promised not to interfere. I'm not interfering. But if you were a dutiful girl, you'd marry your cousin Newton. Look at him. Isn't he wonderful? Yeah, blowing his own horn. He thinks it's election day. All right, but you'll remember what your father told you. Oh, Dad, why are you always picking on Bert? He's really nice. Don't be silly. Oh, stop arguing. After all, we've announced the engagement, and we're picking him up at his apartment to take him to the party. We might as well be civil to him until he's one of us. Then we'll show him. Oh, Dad. Yes, this is the woman's hospital. Not yet, Mr. Halibut. Not yet. Well, you can't blame me for being anxious, can you? No, no. I got the father. <laughs> I'm just a sort of a kibitzer. <laughs> Come on, Mother. Oh, here it is. Oh. Well, it's not a very nice place, if you ask me. Yes? This is Bright Halibut. I'm sure I'm Bert Halibut. Come in. Hold a hospital. Uh, Mrs. Dove just presented uh, Mr. Dove with a five-pound baby boy. <laughs> it's a boy? A boy? A five-pound boy? Nice, I'm proud of you. It's a boy. Isn't that wonderful? The hospital just phoned and told me it was a boy. A five-pound boy. It is. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't say anything. I... I promise not to tell anyone. What? Young man, do you realize what you're saying? Gee, Mr. Underwood, I didn't know it was you. I didn't want you to know about it. Bert, just what does this mean? Don't ask me. It's something very personal. So, leading a double life, eh? Why, you... Listen, Mr. Underwood, please sit down. I can explain anything. Now, it happened... Oh, Bert! Oh. Why, this is outrageous, outrageous. Oh, I, I know it looks suspicious, Mr. Underwood, but I'm just doing it to help out a friend. The child doesn't mean a thing to me, not a thing. A fine story. I tell you, the child doesn't mean a thing to me. I believe you, Bert. I know you would, honey. Come in. Mr. Halbert? Yeah? These are the things you wanted. <laughs> so the kid don't mean a thing to you, eh? Look at this. Yeah, ju ju just a little present for a strange kid. A strange kid? Why, he's named after you. Bert Jr. Well, can I help it if the kid's a forger? Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Halibut. Uh, Mr. Halibut? Uh, we're happy to say that Mrs. Dove also presented Mr. Dove with a baby girl. <laughs> it's twins. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's impossible. It's a lie, I tell you. It's a lie. What's that? It's a... <laughs> wrong number. <laughs> wrong number, huh? Hello. Yes, this is Mr. Halibut. What's that? Oh, I see. It's twins. <laughs> well, I said it was the wrong number. <laughs> Bert. What do you know about these twins? Pomona, I didn't expect them any more than you did. What? Well, if they're not your children, why do you try to hide it? Because I promised to buy all the things for these kids. And each kid means a day off our honeymoon. Well, the way it looks now, there won't be any honeymoon. Pomona! Wait, Pomona. I can prove everything. The man who runs the candy store, they're his babies. This whole thing is just a consequence. Well, you'd better prove it or this is the last you'll ever see of me. Don't worry, Pomona. I'm just as innocent as your father is. What? This whole thing is disgraceful. Dovey, listen. I, oh, I want you to meet my girl and her folks. How do you do? Listen, Dovey. 
I want you to tell them whose wife I am. I mean, uh, whose children are you? Oh, who's your father? I don't understand. I, uh... You know, those twins. What twins? Oh, I forgot to tell you, I got twins. Twins? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Take it easy. What's going on here? Oh, can't you see the man fainted because your wife had twins? Don't drag me into this. Dubby, tell him, Dubby. Tell him, Dubby. Oh, Mr. Dove, your loan application has been granted on one condition. Oh, hello, Mr. Underwood. How do you do? Is this man trying to borrow money from our company? <clears throat> yes, sir. He seems to have no outstanding debts. Well, that remains to be seen. He'll have plenty of debts if he's the father of twins. Mr. Dove, are you the father of twins? Well, I know nothing about it. This is all news to me. Yeah, he really don't know anything about it. I, uh, I don't think he had anything to do with it. Then who did? You said it. Bert! That's enough. Don't you ever dare show your face in my home again. But, Mr. Underwood, but I... We'll hold this party without you. But I want to... Oh, I... Dad, we can't do that. No, just a minute, Mr. Underwood. Oh, what shall I do about the loan? The loan is canceled. Oh, Dad, Bert, no. darling! Oh, what's the use? I might as well end it all. Give me another banana split. All right, Bert. I got it. I'll get to Mona yet. Wait, Bert. What about my wife and children? How will I get news? Don't worry. Tomorrow lives across the street in the hospital, and I'll fix it with the nurse to let me know. Hello, operator. Hurry up. Get me to Hotel Ritzmore. Who is it? Yeah, yeah. This is Louis von Schnitzel. Yeah, Schnitzel from Wien. <laughs> uh, Wiener Schnitzel. Uh, well, uh, this is uh, Samuel J. Uh, Crullivan, uh, uh, Mr. Underwood's uh, secretary. Are you there? Who is it? Uh, are you there? Who is it? My, what a backfire. I say, old chap, uh, the Underwood party is being called off. I'm coming just the same. Hold on, old chap. Uh, Mr. Underwood's headache is caused by a large attack of smallpox. Of course, you can come if you wish to. Oh, no, no, no. Tell Mr. Underwood I am very sorry, but I will not come. Very well. Well, cheerio, pip-pip, toodaloo, and pop off. Ah, oh, Pomona. Yes, this is the woman's hospital. I'll connect you. Uh, oh, nice. I'm Bert Halliburton. Oh, uh, how do you do? Oh. <laughs> There's uh, nothing new on the Dove case. Well, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to a party across the street, see? Oh. And if anything happens, see? Yeah. Uh, I want you to give me a signal. See? Well, uh, what do you mean? Well, uh, you can't call me to the phone, so I'd, uh, I'd like you to take this whistle. And if it's a boy, go to the window and blow once. Mm -hmm. And if it's a girl, blow twice. Well, uh, Mrs. Dove's already had twins. We uh, don't expect any more. Say, I didn't expect twins. <laughs> 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 well, just in case. If it's another boy, blow once. And if it's another girl, blow twice. Oh, all right. Well, uh, happy landing. Baron Ludwig von Schnitzel and his pianist. <laughs> Baron, welcome to my home. Well, well, Mr. Undershirt, how you was? I want you to meet my daughter, Pomona. How do you do, Baron? How do you do? I got hot stuff. But Friends, I have a special treat for you. Baron von Schnitzel, one of our greatest concert artists, will honor us with a song. Oh. Come, Fritz, I give you liver. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, by a special ink belt, I am now going to sing for you a little song which I have just decomposed. It is a little song about the birds, the bees, and the flowers and is entitled Hollyhocks and Cucumbers. Professor Swingert. Oh, the 
hollyhocks and the cucumbers. The hollyhocks and the cucumbers. The hollyhocks and the cucumbers. You imposter! It's another girl. Then go to your wife in the hospital. You can't get me! Dubby, Mr. Underwood, I got a square bird. That woman in the hospital is my wife, and those are my twins. Triplets. What? Triplets. Good heavens, how do you know? Well, I arrange it with the nurse. If she, if she blows the whistle once, it's, it's a boy. And if she blows the whistle twice, it's a girl. And she just blew the whistle twice. You see, Father Bird is innocent. Perhaps you're right. Do me a favor, Mr. Underwood. Let Dubby have the loan for $500. He'll need it now that he has triplets. <laughs> well, I won't stand in your way. Holy smoke, Dubby. Another boy. Oh, quadruplets. Another girl. Dubby, you tied the world's record. Dubby, you passed it. What a man! What a man! Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, Dubby. I'll protect you. <laughs> I'll demand a recount. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.